Am I the a-hole stories? Am I the a-hole for telling my parents I have no positive memories with them? Yesterday my friend came over. We have been friends for 5 years now and we were talking about some fun things we did in school. Our school is on a huge piece of land, and we found some planks and built a huge fort with a lot of our friends, and it was our secret paradise where we would sleep during breaks or just chat a lot. We talked for hours about memories it was just like, you remember when? It was a nice trip down memory lane. My parents were pretty happy and they wanted to do the same thing, but I honestly couldn't think of one positive memory I had with them. I used to run and hide because I was so scared of my dad. I also remembered going through homework with my mom, and it being a huge blow to my self-esteem, as she would call me stupid and worthless. I remembered trying to unplug my dad's Mac charger and getting electrocuted, but the charger got spoilt and I was punished for spoiling the charger since it was expensive. I told them I cannot remember a positive memory, and maybe they can help me remember. They talked about teaching me how to write, but that was a negative memory to me since I was basically being threatened throughout the process. They mentioned playing pranks, like pretending they were angry at me, but that was negative to me because I was just scared. They called me unappreciative, and said that they were sorry they could not make me happy, condescendingly. Now I am wondering if I was the a-hole, I am not saying I needed expensive vacations to have positive memories or anything like that, I had positive memories in science class, and I have positive memories of my older sister carrying me on her shoulders when I was little, but all I remember is being scared of what my parents would do to me, to the point I even flinch when someone give me a high five. I remember my friends asking me why I'm scared of a high five, when I flinch when they are going to high five me. I asked my sister if she has good memories with her parents, and she said she does, but she has more bad than good ones with her parents. She also mentioned that she only remembered them, because of random things, like seeing the Nokia logo reminded her of our parents setting up her first phone, and when she heard some Daft Punk songs it reminded her of us in the car going to visit our grandma. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. They don't like to be faced with their own failure as parents, but that doesn't mean you needed to fabricate some happy memories to appease their egos. Exactly. Not the a-hole. They cared more about a charger than you, no wonder you have no fond memories. Also, parents shouldn't fake being angry to a child, that isn't funny whatsoever. Not the a-hole. What would you be supposed to do? Invent some positive memories? I'm sorry you had such a bad experience with your parents. Not the a-hole. It's better for you in the long run to be aware of your parents' bad behavior, so you don't repeat it in your adult life. Not just if you have kids, but with friends, relationships, etc. Fair play to you for having the balls to call them out, when I presume you still keep a relationship with them and knew you'd probably get backlash. Side note. My parents weren't the greatest either. I had it out with my mom a couple of years ago. I basically confronted her and said you really screwed up and I'm an adult now and we can either make positive memories from now on, or you can get out of my life. We actually have a much better relationship for it. My dad, unfortunately is a lost cause and will never change, so I just pretend everything's normal and keep a safe distance from him. Unless, he comes into my home and starts acting up, then he's immediately kicked out. I wouldn't have had the balls to do that now, if I had never stood up to my parents and called them out on their crap. So no, you're not an a-hole. Not the a-hole and I'm so sorry you felt slash feel so scared of them. I hope you have someone you can trust and confide in about how you are feeling. Sounds like you are still young? Hope you are safe. Yeah, my sister, I am 15. My sister cut contact with them, but I still chat with her and we play a lot of games together. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to give my parents my passwords now that I'm an adult? This happened a few months ago and my dad is insistent that I'm the a-hole here. My parents have always been kind of overprotective. Ever since I was old enough to make my first social media accounts, they insisted that they had to have the passwords to them. Being around 11 years old at the time, I agreed. I soon got upset though, since I started noticing messages being sent that weren't typed by me on my account. If my friends swore, my parents would send them a message acting as if they were me, being rude to them and telling them that I didn't want to be friends with them anymore. This caused a lot of fights between me and my friends. Meanwhile, my parents stated that it was for the best. As I got older, this behavior just got worse. Around high school, my dad installed security cameras in the house. He said it was for keeping us safe, but honestly, it feels like I'm in prison. The cameras are all in different angles to make sure there are no blind spots. They're placed in the kitchen, 
living room and all the hallways. None in the bedrooms or bathrooms though. He can check them on his phone, along with using them as an intercom system to get upset at me if I'm doing something he doesn't like. He made me install an app onto my phone that logs where I go, for how long and how I got there. It keeps this information for about a week and notifies him if I turn off my location sharing. He checks it often and then asks me about it almost daily. Example, I saw you went to X's house today. How was that? He also keeps a paper in the house with all my usernames and passwords for every social media account I have that they know about. They make me update it yearly and test it before letting me go to make sure that it all works. They say that it's for safety reasons, so that if I go missing or something, they can check who I was talking to. However, I'm 21 now. I live with him to save money since I'm still a full-time university student. Recently, my dad asked me to update the passwords and I told him no, because I would like to have some privacy now. He got extremely upset and used his parental controls on the Wi-Fi to cut my devices from getting connected for a week. I wasn't able to do my homework properly, and I couldn't call with friends or anything because I don't have much data in my phone plan. I got upset with my dad and got into a pretty bad argument with him. He said that he was just protecting me, and that is my father, it was his job to make sure that he always knew where I was and what I was doing. I tried talking to my mom about this, but she said that I shouldn't keep seeing the both of them as the bad guys, and that I would eventually understand. She cried during our conversation and kept telling me how much I hurt my dad by implying that I don't trust him. I've always been introverted and never go anywhere without telling them. I don't think I need to be surveilled this heavily, but I do feel bad for upsetting my mom so much. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. This is abuse. This, it's also not okay when you're 15, but we can let it slide for now. But when you're 21? Oh no. Although I hate pouring water and hot oil in this subreddit, especially that which can potentially ruin important relations. I would urge you to try to talk to them about it, and about how unhealthy this is or talk to some other sane elder in the family who in turn can talk to them. It's insane. But do not give in. And change all your passwords please. Not the a-hole. Honestly, I have no words for how bad and toxic their behavior is. Please, for your own sake, move out, change all your passwords, and show them some boundaries. This is not a healthy relationship and you are a grown adult. Don't tolerate this anymore. Not the a-hole. I've worked in domestic mistreatment homes before, and they would absolutely take you in for a few months while you figure things out. This is toxic and harmful, even if good intentions are in play. No parent should be that controlling of their child, especially once you get old enough to be an adult. I didn't know that that was an option for me. I went to therapy for a little while secretly, before they caught me by noticing I was at school too long, I asked the therapist to meet me at university, and started texting me to make sure I went straight home. The therapist did tell me that this was mistreatment. But I thought that that kind of lodging wouldn't be available to me since I'm not really a child, and they don't physically harm me either. Thank you for letting me know. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for no longer wanting to look after my siblings, now that my parents have been given custody by the courts? This is actually a really long and complicated story, but I'll try to be as brief as possible. Basically, my, 22 female, parents have just finalized their divorce. It's gone on for over a year now, and was started because my mom cheated. Both my parents accused the other of being an unfit parent, and so my siblings, 16 female, 12 male and 6 female, were going to be put in foster care for the duration of the divorce and custody proceedings. I stupidly put my hand up and volunteered to look after the three of them. They have lived with me since, but I no longer want to look after them now that my parents' custody arrangement is finalized, mom dad, 60-40. My parents have basically asked me to become their permanent caregiver, but I have refused. I understand that with this much unrest, they'd probably be better with me rather than split between two houses, but honestly, I'm just sick of dealing with them. I study full-time and work part-time, and even though my costs have been covered by my parents, I just don't feel like I want to have to be in the middle of their petty fights anymore. I love my siblings, but the 12 mil is autistic and a lot of work. This last year, my boyfriend broke up with me because I no longer had time for him and my grades have dropped. I've also been formally reprimanded at work for falling asleep. Am I the a-hole for not continuing to look after my siblings? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. You're not the parent, they are. And they were too preoccupied with being petty towards each other, 
instead of actually looking at the best interest of all their children, including you. And now they still want to burden you, because it conveniences them and they can act child-free because they enjoyed it this year. Choose yourself, your mental health, your schooling and your own future. You're not responsible for their neglect. Spot on. OP's parents were the ones who chose to make the decisions they did, and there is no way she should have to deal with all of the fallout, on top of going to school, working, and living her life. That's difficult for a lot of parents to even do, and most parents aren't working and going to school at the same time. OP, if you need any, I or others can direct you to some mental health resources, because you sound like you're in an especially difficult situation, so if you need anything, let us know. Oh, and also, definite not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. They got in an ugly custody battle over the children, and now neither one of them wants custody? It seems that this battle wasn't about the kids at all, but about them. Step out of the middle, give them the kids back, and be a big sister. You can still take them for a weekend every once in a while, check in, make sure they're doing okay. Yup. Your custody, your responsibility. Even before that, they as birth parents, are primarily responsible for their care and upbringing. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not letting my parents use my bed while they visit my house? My mom, stepdad, and I, have a troubled relationship. They're a Karen and a Ken. If you've seen the movie Red Eye, they're that obnoxious hotel couple. Regardless, they are visiting this week. They came in from out of town, which is always stressful for me and my husband. My husband and I have a queen bed. We have a twin bed in one bedroom, a full bed in our main guest room. We put my parents for the full. The full bed is not some rickety old thing, it's maybe 5 years old. My parents came to me this morning, and told me they had just the worst night of sleep. They said the full bed isn't big enough for them, they got no sleep, they are so grouchy today, and could we please give them our bed for the week? I was all huh? I said no. For me, it's not just our bed, my parents would absolutely be the type to snoop around our bedroom. My parents have been complaining off and on all day. They had an extra cup of coffee, because they're so tired. They need Advil because their back is so sore. Stuff like that. My husband has ignored them for the most part. My stepdad tried to be all buddy-buddy, and hinted the bed swap to my husband. Am I the a-hole? Should I give my parents my bed? Edited to add, they are larger people. Not sure if this makes a difference. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. This is your house and your bed. I'm sure they don't offer you their bed when you visit. They shouldn't expect you to, but they are obviously entitled. Tell them they have three choices. 1. Deal with the full-size bed. 2. One of them sleeps in the full and the other in the twin. 3. They pay for a hotel room. Of course, number 4 would be that they never bring their entitlement to your doorstep again. I'm about to suggest number 2 the next time they complain or offer to get a queen-size inflatable mattress, that'll end the conversation really quickly. Ha! I don't want to offer that in fear they'll say yes. Not the a-hole. They said the full bed isn't big enough for them, they got no sleep, they are so grouchy today, and could we please give them our bed for the week? Oh, you know what? I just read how sleeping on a nice, hard floor is supposed to do wonders for your back and leave you feeling refreshed and rejuvenated. Let me help get you set up. Ha ha. I love it. Should I give my parents my bed? Hell no. You should give them the number. Hotel. You are not the a-hole here at all, but they certainly are, for acting this way. Added to add, based on your edit, my opinion doesn't change. You have two beds available, they can sleep separately, make do together, or go to a hotel. There is no circumstance in which it is acceptable to ask your host for their bed. Period. When you visit family. You make do with the accommodations provided and are thankful for not having to have a hotel room. You swallow your words about lost sleep. Or aches and pains the bed causes. Hubs and I once shared the guest room at my Grammy's house, which has an absolutely intolerable bed. For a week. And we're grateful to be able to wake up on the farm instead of a hotel. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.